do, do, do. Oh, we're live. Excellent. There we go. So, um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're not quite live yet. We're going to be live in like two seconds here. Come on. There we go. Hey, what's up, Hacksters? Welcome to Wednesday. Um, appropriately for What the Wednesday, I've been dying to build this robot for ages. It's a sock puppet robot. It's gonna look like this kind of- well, this is what the skeleton is gonna look like. Um, uh, I just want to have a robot that can like- <laughs> I'll be able to like put a camera on top and have uh, in some shades and have it like take pictures of people too. But um, for now, like the, the base idea is just that it's, you know, we've got these hackster socks and more and more people are giving away socks at events, which I think is fantastic because we can have lots of socks for one thing, but also um, because, uh, yeah, they're like gender neutral, they fit most people and stuff, and these ones are really soft and comfy. Uh, so uh, it seems like a no-brainer. Oh, I should have shown you. My uh, friend Jessica made a hackster sock monkey out of these, which is incredible. I'll show you later, I'll, pull it, I'll put a picture up. Um, but yeah, we have these socks. I want to make it into a sock puppet, uh, and it'll like be able to welcome people to the office and later on take pictures of them as well. <laughs> so we won't have to always like, you know, have someone left out of the picture or whatever. I feel like we might need to modify the socks a little bit, but maybe I can make a version of this that works with it as is, maybe with like a really long nose or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so the base that I'm using here is an Adafruit, uh, it's basically a bunch of Adafruit parts in one, I'm going to show you what those are. Um, we have, okay, uh, the Adafruit Cricut, which is a uh, robotics kit that works with a bunch of different things. They have a feather version, they have uh, one with the Circuit Playground Express, which is what I'm using, they will have one for the Raspberry Pi, etc. I did a, an unboxing of this just a couple weeks ago, so it may look familiar to you. If not, uh, you should watch our channel more. Uh, and then also it's on top of this robot chassis that I got out of an Adabox. If you're not familiar with Adabox, it is a subscription box that Adafruit sets, sends out. I had a subscription for a few months and then I stopped uh, because honestly, <laughs> I don't need more, more random bits of electronics. But it's very cool and it's very pretty. Um, then we also have a continuous rotation servo. We have a uh, micro servo. Let's go back to the actual real world here. Yeah, we've got, so here's the Cricut with the Circuit Playground Express attached. And I'm programming this in CircuitPython, which is the Adafruit version of MicroPython. Um, that we've got this continuous rotation servo on here. I think actually I'll probably just replace this with an, like I, I thought this was a standard servo um, that goes like zero to 180 and um, just is a little more beefy than your standard micro servo because I want to be able to uh, move the head and stuff. But it turns out this is a continuous rotation servo. It doesn't make a lot of sense for this project, um, largely just because it, like I don't need something that cool. So I might as well use this for something else. Um, pardon me. <coughs> so and then we also have a micro servo on here, which does your standard sort of zero to one eighty thingamajig. The Cricut is fantastic. It has spots for four servos right off the bat. Uh, then you also have capacitive touch sensing. You've got signal in out. You've got NeoPixel hookups. You've got a speaker hookup. You've got a drive system. And then you've got um, this motor guy for um, DC servo, uh, DC motors. And I think you can also hook up a stepper motor if you use the entire five pins. Um, that would be like two DC motors or a one stepper motor uh, using these hookups. So I've hooked up the two DC motors with their little gearboxes um, on this chassis to the motor here uh, connections. I've got a five volt barrel jack power supply, which if I take this to events and stuff, which is where I would put other people's socks on it, uh, then I would hopefully just have an outlet to plug it into. Uh, and then I'm also programming the Circuit Playground Express through this micro USB cable. So this is what I've got so far. And I've got a bunch of wood pieces in the office that I'm going to try and cobble together into a sort of arm shape. 
but uh, I want this to be really like simple and friendly. I think it's a great idea. And let's see how it's working. So I've uh, hooked up, I've put together some code from various examples. Um, this is the two motor test, which is basically, I clutched together very simply uh, the two servo demo, um, code demo, and uh, the two DC motor demo which is what's linked at the top there. And we can look at that in a second in the browser window. But yeah, so as you can see, you're basically, uh, you're printing a message to the screen that says dual motor demo. Um, we're making, pardon, uh, uh, we've assigned little names to the motors. This is in the example code, but what I wanna do while we're live today is rename these so that I know which one is left and which one is right, because it's got tank steering, right? So if you drive them both forwards, then the robot goes forwards. If you drive them both backwards, the robot goes back. If you drive one forwards and one, uh, anyway, if you drive one forwards and one backwards, then it turns, right? in place, which is really cool with tank steering. Uh, if I drive the right one forward and the left one back, it turns to the left, but stays in place. Um, and then if you have one just be still and then drive the other one forward, it kind of pivots around around an angle, right? Um, robotics, I love this. Ah, anyway, so I've modified this code basically. And if I plug in the power again, the robot is gonna freak out because, oh yeah, uh, because <laughs> this is a very active piece of code. Um, the other thing about this is what's cool about CircuitPython and MicroPython uh, in general is that you just save this to your robot onto the Circuit Playground Express. You can drag it and drop it onto there, name it main.py. And I've also previously saved the, the original main.py file uh, as main original.py. And I've got various versions of the code st stored on here, but the one called main.py is the one that's going to run. And if you want to make alterations to it, you just make the alterations and then resave it. And it resets and starts running that code. It's fantastic. I mean, as long as there's no errors and stuff, in which case, you know, you'll, you'll figure that out pretty quick. Um, two trusty screwdrivers. I love these. Uh, this is just a super cheapo. Oh, it's from SparkFun. You know, it's got Phillips on one end and like flathead on the other and you just swap them around. I was using that for the larger screws in the chassis and on the Circuit Playground Express, these guys and these guys. And then this one is fantastic as well. I don't know where it came from, but it's just, I think it came with a simple robot kit, but it's also got Phillips on one end, flathead on the other. It's much smaller and thinner and it's really perfect for these little screw terminals. Um, yeah, so good. So that's what I've used to put these all together. Um, there's some little extender wires on these motors from before. I put this together at one point before, uh, just trying to figure out what to do with it. And now it's finally found a purpose, like two years later. This is so cool. Okay, enough talking. Let's get the thing up and running. I'm gonna lift it up, because otherwise it's gonna drive off the table. Uh, and you'll see what I mean. And we'll figure out which motor is which. Yes? I, th I thought we were going to figure out which motor was which. Let's hit reset and see what happens. Hey, there we go. <laughs> so in the code, you can see these, these servos are kind of going off as well. Ooh. I'm not sure exactly how the continuous servo responds to its code, which is interesting. Um, the other one is sort of doing what's expected. Why is it sleeping twice as long for some of these? Oh, because it intentionally says to stop. Okay, cool, yeah. Uh, so in the code, let's reset this again in a moment. In the code, what happens first is that motor one goes forwards, motor two goes backwards. So let's see what happens. One is forwards, two is backwards. Reset. Okay, so one is the left one. I'm gonna rename that. I'm gonna unplug this again. 
so noisy. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm just unplugging the power to the cricket board. So uh, this barrel jack here that goes to an outlet. Uh, I'm leaving this attached to my computer because that's how I'm programming it. Oh, uh, to connect these two, I've just used some uh, foam tape that sort of insulates it and gives it a little bit of separation from the base and also adheres it. Uh, that's not, you know, a long-term solution. As you saw when I pulled this up, it kind of like wiggled around a bit, which means that that's not good. I don't want things shorting out through the chassis. We've also got some slightly dangerous situation going on over here with the uh, motor wires. And all of that is something that I would completely fix before trying to actually deploy this anywhere. But it's a good start. Perfect for testing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is um, rename this left. In fact, I'm gonna be super lazy. Ah, cool. So motor one, la la la. Will be left. And I could swap these if I wanted to just rewire the robot, but there's really no point. It. I mean, the only reason I would do that is if I wanted to have the right motor go first in this demo, and I could easily just switch the code. There's really no reason to do that. Well, I mean, yeah, no, if you have, I think an L looks like a one, so, and an R kind of looks like a two, actually. So that makes a lot of sense. It's very nice and kind of makes sense here. So let's save this. And then I'm gonna open it up in my, um, I'm browsing to Circuit Pi, which shows up as a flash device in this uh, in my file system, and I'm going to update main.py. Actually, I'm going to redrag this onto. Oh, I don't even. Ha I do have this on the on the device, but I'm going to redrag it on there. Oh, it's already on there. As you can see, <laughs> normally what I will do actually is uh, edit files on my computer and then drag them onto the external file, the the Playground Express because that's better, because then you have a backup, you know exactly what it is, and you can edit it uh, separately. So I'm going to actually drag that into my main file system. Um, but now what I'm going to do is duplicate this. I'm going to delete main.py. And I'm going to rename this main.py. I could also open main.py and copy this code and paste it over what's in there already. That might even be easier and faster. It's just generally really easy and fast and nice and beautiful and pretty. And I love Circuit Python. <sighs> it's cool. So yeah, so now we have that and let's make sure that that's still accurate. So in our code, left motor goes forward first, right motor goes backwards first. Let's make sure that is actually the case because double checking is good. Ah, come back. Mm. Okay. And it should have reset when I resaved the code, so uh, well, maybe I'll need to hit it again. Left motor forward, right forward, motor back. Oh, yikes. That's no good. Did I rename it wrong somehow? Why is only the right wheel moving? No, I think that's right. Which means that probably it's just become disconnected somehow. That's strange. The servos aren't going either. Wait, this is acting as a... What's going on here? My servos aren't moving at all either. Did I just copy some weird code? Ugh. 
Okay, let's copy this. Why would that happen though? Oh, this is the other. Oh, duh. I'm, I copied the wrong code. I forgot that. So two motor test. Why is this? No, that should be dual motor test. Oh! Motor servo.py is the one that I want. <laughs> two motor test.py is the one from the Adafruit website that's just for the two motors. And I don't know why the left motor isn't working, but we'll first get the right code onto the board and then we'll worry about that. Okay, doing this again. Right now I'm just renaming the motors again. I'm gonna upload this uh, to the device. Um, Motorservo.py is gonna be the name of the game. We're gonna open that up. I'm gonna save all of these actually. Thanks for bearing with me while I do this. Motor servo.py. Okay, now I'm gonna duplicate that one. Or you know what? I'm just gonna copy it and open up main.py and paste it into there. Oh yeah. What in the world? Okay, I'm gonna save that. So that should be correct now. <laughs> um I've saved that onto the board. And hopefully, we'll get left motor forward, right forward, back. Come on. No! Okay, well this at least confirms that uh, the code is right. And it does still look like the left motor is out of commission for some reason. Oh! Weird, I've got an extra screw in here? Is something shorted? Why is there an extra screw there? Is it blocking the wheel? I th would have thought that I would hear some kind of a grinding noise or something. What is going on here? Why is there all this metallic fluff? Um, oh, yeah, let's check these. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Why are came undone? These are pretty flimsy extensions right now. So probably what I should do is just put some electrical tape on there. That's gonna get all gunky. Ugh. I'll just I'll just deal with this for now. Maybe try and fold it down a little bit so that it stays in place. There, you should all be happy now. Okay, okay, okay. Huh. Reapplying power. Left motor forward, right for motor back. Let's reset this guy. And what do we get? Wait, huh? Hmm. They're both going backwards and forwards at the same time, which is not what I expected. At two different speeds. So, all right, so the motors go both go backwards um, at two different speeds seemingly and the code says f oh you know what the deal with these motors on here is that they are mounted backwards from each other so if you're driving one forwards and the other backwards they're gonna go the same direction notice how see how the axles are both pointing outwards um, while they're on their sides like this oriented pointing the same direction that means that uh, driving one leftward uh, and driving the other one rightward means the same thing. Does that make sense? Um, so if I'm turning this one to the left, it goes towards the back of the bot, right? Looking from the top. And if I turn this one rightwards, the top of it goes towards the back of the bot as well. 
Right, so it's not set up to be wheels. <laughs> Let's... I'm just going to edit this in main.py. Um, and make that a little bit more clear. Okay. There are ways I could do this where if I tell... I probably just want to end up writing little functions for drive forwards, left, right, backwards. Uh, and then I don't have to remember this. That will make my life much easier. Uh, let's take a look at how it looks right now. Uh, this is what we've got. So, uh, motor left, motor right. Uh, I'm actually not sure which one is which anymore because they're doing the same thing. I just kind of assumed that uh, one of them would be the reverse of the other before. We've got them doing... So one of them is going forwards while the other one is going backwards. I don't know. I'm just going to write my own... My own uh, hmm. Let's say clockwise and counterclockwise instead. So I'm just going to watch the left motor and see what it does. Why don't I plug it in? <clears throat> Pardon. And reset it actually. Ooh, did I save that? I did. So those are actually backwards. When I reset, uh, the left one goes back first and the right one goes forwards. Okay. And so backward. I'm going to correct the code here. Um. Okay, so that's great. Now, how do I write a function in Python? I'm just going to keep going because I'm having a good time. Um, and I'm going to save this to my computer. Drive test motor servo dot pi. Okay. I'm gonna look up how to make a custom function in CircuitPython. Circuit pi on custom function. Um but actually let's while we're here on the internet, let's take a quick look at some more of these tabs I have open because they're actually useful things. Um on the Adafruit Cricket tutorial. There's all kinds of exciting uh, information and this one is specifically for the Cricut Playground with the Cricut. Um, they've got troubleshooting the Cricut, recommended motors, recommended chassis, and remember how I told you that this this little robot chassis comes from an Ada box? Well you can also just look on the recommended chassis, it's the second one, mini three layer round robot chassis kit, two wheel drive with DC motors, it comes with the motors and a little caster on the front and everything else that you need here. And there's a couple other options as well. If you want to make a little race car, you can do that. Uh, yeah, and programming options is really useful. You can program with the Arduino IDE, with CircuitPython, or with MakeCode. MakeCode is great. It is a uh, Adafruit MakeCode. Um, here we go. Uh, this is a block code editor, like Scratch or Blockly. And uh, it lets you just drag and drop things onto here, like when you click button A, then like play a little doot to doot, <laughs> etc. And maybe you want to drive your motors that way. Um, but it also, you can swap back and forth between that and JavaScript. It automatically converts it. And if you messed up the JavaScript, it won't convert back. But that's a great way to learn. So that's really cool. Uh, I've chosen CircuitPython because I just like how it works. If you're using the online editor, then you often have you have to like 
save your code and then you have to name it something and then you have to download it and then you have to drag the hex file onto your robot uh, the circuit playground where it shows up as a flash device and I just think it's a lot of steps uh, it's really flexible and really nice but for me the upload process is more annoying so I don't like to do it and also it's really hard to go back from the hex file on your board to the actual code whereas with circuit python you know it's stored there you can just open the file look at it mess with it save it done oh so good I never get tired of talking about CircuitPython. It's so good. Um, here is how you set up your Circuit Playground Express and Cricut with CircuitPython. That is also on one of these pages here. Very simple. They make it really easy for you. Uh, I think maybe if we go to CircuitPython code. Yeah, download the special version of CircuitPython for CPX mounted on Cricut. It's right there. You just click it. It's there. Um, wonderful. Uh, they tell you how to hook up your servos with the ground wire towards the center. Um, they tell you how to hook up your DC motors. Very simple. And uh, yeah, everything about it is super lovely. What was I doing? I was trying to figure out how to do a custom function. Function basics. Look at this. Ah, their tutorials are gold. They're pure gold. Um, Do, 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 just show me how to do the thing. Uh, let's just do this. I think that's all I have to do. And then later on, if I want to use it, I'll just be like, uh, <laughs> you just call it by doing a function name. Okay, cool. Um, and then I would probably want to put the speed in as a parameter. Pardon me. Nose is itchy. Ah. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to make sure that we can see the whole window. Oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Come on, code window. There we go. Gotta make you smaller so we can see the whole piece of code. Great. So. Actually, if I just make this shorter, we can make it bigger. I'm always looking out for you. So, yeah, here's our code right now. What I'm going to do is make a little function. So def foo x, just go under while true. That is our main loop. The deal with while true is that uh, basically it means forever. One equals one. Uh, so that's why it goes over and over. Okay, so define. Um, hmm. Now, how do I want to signify? Yeah, easy. Okay, so define left. Do is that what I want to call it? Probably derive L. Um, and then I'm going to say, so if I want to drive left, the left motor is going to go backwards, the right motor is going to go forwards. And I'm going to say x for the speed, because that's what I'm passing in as a parameter, which we'll see in a second. I think this is how you do it. We'll find out because I'm going to just actually I'm going to, you know, what? I should save this as a new file. And mess around in it that way. Save copy as main dash scratch pad dot pi. OK, let's open that. I'm going to go into, here we go. Now the um, editor that I'm using here is called idle. And I'm only using that because I don't have Moo installed. Moo is a great editor for Python or all kinds of stuff. They've got little dedicated 
outfits for uh, working with the micro bit as well as yeah other s microcontrollers so here's our code I'm gonna do exactly what I was just doing um, we've got this function I'm going to cut out the servo stuff and bring that in later we're going to check that these work what I'm going to do first is say um, drive L1. I think that should work. Drive L.5. Oh, wait, let's say turn L. Because we might want to do a separate drive left function that still incorporates forward motion i.e. the left motor is stopped or going more slowly and the right motor is just driving faster uh, which is another way to go left you know you can go left in place you can go left while pivoting on a single wheel or you can go left while you're like slowly turning while you're also driving all kinds of options so let's see if that turn l function works and maybe I'll make a stop one. Well, no, I'll, I'll just check that one first. How do you do multiple line comments in Python? Let's remind ourselves. Python multi line comment. First result. <laughs> Is there a way? Triple quoted strings. Cool. Make sure in, to indent the heading appropriately. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to comment out all of that. And they said to indent properly, so I'm going to do that. <laughs> there we go. So now all that is commented out. We're going to run this. Uh, this is main-scratchpad.py. I'm going to copy it to the main.py file. Save it. And now going to plug in my motors again and let us all see what's going on. Uh, what should happen is that it should move the motors in a way that's turning left. Or possibly in a way that's turning right. We'll find out. Reset. Doesn't like it. Why doesn't it like it? Let's reset once more. Does not like it. Okay, I've done something wrong. I'm not surprised. <laughs> uh, turn L is our function. <laughs> I'm sure that people are yelling at me in uh, the comments, so let's have a look. David Challenger says hello, and Dave De Cruz says hi. Uh, if someone feels like telling me what I'm doing wrong, you're welcome to. Otherwise, I'm going to keep plugging on. Um, and let's see. I'm going to look on YouTube as well, because I always forget to do that. It takes a little bit more effort. Here we go. I'm going to see if there's anyone in the chat over there. Oh, there are! Hello! Uh, someone says, what is the start of the topic? Please explain. Um, I am making a robot. <laughs> I am not sure what the total cost is, but if you look at the links in the description to the video on Facebook, and also soon on here, you'll be able to see the total cost of the robot. Um, and Anne is asking for a recap. Uh, Anne, thank you for asking. We are building a robot, and I'm trying to program this kit from Adafruit, if you go to adafruit.com uh, slash product slash 3093, then you will see what I am working with. In fact, I'll put this in the link in the chat there. Okay, cool. 
So now that that's done, let's see why my function isn't working. What have I done wrong? Function basics. Do, 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 do. I've got, I seem to have that correct. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't like having a variable in there. Maybe I have to declare the variable, actually. Hmm. In fact, how do I get the feedback from the, uh, I think if I were running Moo, it would actually tell me what the problem is, <laughs> but, uh, let's see, I don't have any error messages here. So, well, I think, I think that I have to declare my variables, maybe. Hmm. I don't think so though. With parameters, you can pretty much just name them whatever. Let's rename x to speed. See what happens now. I have a green light for some reason. <laughs> I don't understand why there is a green light here. Is that your code status? In which case this should be working, but it's not. Both my motors are plugged in. Well, okay. It seems like we've reached a point where I need to just troubleshoot a bunch of stuff and figure out, um, like brush up on my circuit Python and also recheck through all these circuits and stuff to make sure that it's good. Uh, that being the case, I'm going to sign off so that I don't subject all of you to that <laughs> and uh, go on to my evening plans. And we'll be back soon with this project. I'm really excited about it. Uh, stay tuned. In the future, in the near future, we're going to be playing around with the micro bit, which is uh, this little guy as well. I think these are both really wonderful starter boards for beginners uh, who want to get into electronics. There is, this one has a 5x5 LED grid. It's got two input buttons. It's got some really nice big pins that you can alligator clip to or sew to or whatever, uh, but also a bunch of smaller ones for more advanced users. You've got an accelerometer, uh, Bluetooth low energy. You've got um, a temperature sensor, I think, and a bunch of other stuff. Whereas this one uh, has a couple of input buttons, a little buzzer, a sound sensor, like volume sensor, little infrared LEDs that you can use to make them communicate with each other, um, temperature sensor, ambient light sensor, 10 LED ring instead of your 5x5 grid that you have on here, a little user input switch, uh, an accelerometer, um, and a bunch of other cool stuff. They both have lithium polymer battery or JST connectors for whatever type of batteries you have, whether that's LiPos or uh, double A's or whatever. Uh, both great little boards, and uh, yeah, we'll be working with both of those in the weeks to come. Stay tuned! Thanks for watching, and hack on! Oh, if you want to stay, uh, <laughs> if you want to stay on top of this project and see what comes out of it, you can follow me on Hackster, uh, hackster.io slash, it's in the description, G-L-O-W-A-S-C-I-I. -I. Uh, yeah, have an awesome rest of your Wednesday, if it's still Wednesday, wherever you are. Cheers.